Welcome to Volatility Trading Strategies. So a few short years ago, it would not have been the case, but as of now in August of 2017, I'm comfortable saying that probably quite a few of you out there, at least on some level, have been introduced to the exciting world of investing in volatility products. Tickers like XIV, VXX, ZIV, UVXY, the VMIN, and many, many more. These are slowly making their way into the lexicon of diversified investors the world over, and I believe for very good reason, because traditional asset class investing has not exactly been killing it in the last couple of decades. As an example, even with all dividends reinvested along the way, as of today, the 20-year annualized return of the S&P 500 is only 4.6%, and that's considered a pretty solid performer. By the time people add in some bonds for diversification, and then of course pay management fees, Oftentimes, the average investor's effective annual return is just a couple percent. As another example, there was a time in the past when hedge funds really were the cream of the crop in the investing world. But those days are long gone. The 10-year annualized return of the HFRI Composite Hedge Fund Index is only 3.08%. So it's not surprising that investors the world over are looking for ways to boost their performance. And investing in the various volatility products that have been introduced in the last few years is potentially one way of achieving that. However, there is some fine print here that people do need to be aware of. And as the name suggests, volatility products can be volatile. They are inherently risky. And this is something that a lot of managers out there don't seem very willing to address. Articles raving about the outsized performance are dime a dozen. But the ones talking about the risks are a lot harder to find. And I certainly understand why this is. From a marketing perspective, it's not the best idea in the world to tell people that the products that you're trying to sell are inherently risky and they can suffer gut-wrenching drawdowns from time to time. But I look at it a different way. I feel like if I'm up front with people right from the start and say, yes, the products are risky and drawdowns from time to time are not only possible but likely, anybody after that who says, okay, I acknowledge the risks and I'm still interested, at that point, we can have a constructive conversation about how to mitigate the risk so that they have the best long-term experience. So in this video, I'd like to introduce another level of risk management to my volatility strategies that might strike a nice balance between performance and safety. So let's get into it. So I offer two different volatility strategies that each have their own risk reward dynamics. And I've done dedicated videos for both of them. I'll put some cards up in the corner there. You can check those out when you have a chance. But the first one is called the VTS Tactical Volatility Strategy, and it trades the volatility products XIV and VXX. And while it is quite conservative in nature, with long-term market exposure of only 46%, and 54% of the time it's in cash, because it's focused on the front two months of the VIX futures curve, the day-to-day -day movements can be pretty large. As an example, since inception just under seven years ago, there have been 35 single-day XIV crashes of 10% or more. Of course, I do my best to avoid as many of them as possible, and my strategy has only been hit with five of them out of the 35. But the point is that it has happened before and it will happen again. So again, while I would say that compared to my competitors, it is quite a conservative strategy, Within the context of my business, this is the more aggressive of the two that I offer. As a side note, I always recommend people don't pay too much attention to the annualized return. There's many ways that traders can take on excessive risk and boost that number substantially as long as the markets cooperate, which for the most part in this now second longest bull market in history they have. But that won't always be the case, so instead I focus on increasing the risk-adjusted metrics like the Sharpe Ratio, the Ulcer Performance Index, as well as reducing the maximum drawdown as much as possible. The second strategy I offer is called the VTS Conservative Vol, and as the name suggests, it is the safer of the two that I trade. This one trades the tickers ZIV and VXZ, which derive their price based on a rolling of the 4th to the 7th month of the VIX futures curve. And because the curve is often flatter further out in time, the day-to-day -day movements of the ZIV and VXZ are considerably less on average. And again, I would say just ignore the annualized return number there. I know it's flashy and people get excited, but remember the average fund manager out there isn't even getting a 5% annual rate of return. So we certainly don't need to be trying to get 40% or more out of any of our strategies. The most important factor by far is making sure that it stands the test of time and can be successful when markets are no longer cooperating. The last several years have certainly been a lot of fun, but again, it's not always going to be like this. So I focus on having the highest sharp and ulcer along with the lowest drawdowns possible. So those are the two strategies. 
Both of them hold cash over 50% of the time, so aside from a few bumps and bruises along the way, we should have a pretty consistent experience. Now, investors are of course gonna choose the strategy that best suits their long-term goals, but something that I wanted to show some actual numbers for is what happens when the two of them are combined. I'm calling this the 50-50 combined volatility, and it's exactly that. 50% is the VTS tactical volatility, which trades the XIV and VXX, and then 50% VTS conservative vol, which trades the ZIV and VXE. And the point of doing this is to further improve those risk-adjusted metrics. I've done dedicated videos for all of these risk-adjusted metrics, and I think it's worth watching them if you have a chance, but I'll go through the two most important ones here, starting with the ulcer performance index. The higher the number, the better here, and for the main VTS tactical volatility, 14.47 is pretty high, which shows that the drawdowns have been relatively low and also relatively short-lived. The reason I like the ulcer performance index so much is because it does account for both of those, both magnitude as well as duration. The VTS conservative vol improves on it because in this category, smooth performance does get rewarded. And then combining both, it gets even better. Now this isn't always the case. You can't just mash any two strategies together and expect the numbers to improve. The reason this works here is that both of these strategies are different. They have different indicators, they focus on a different part of the VIX futures curve, and they have a relatively low correlation to one another. So putting them together makes sense and it ends up helping the numbers. Next, for the maximum drawdown category, you can see that while it's not quite as low as the conservative strategy, it's not that far off. I feel like when people commit to investing in volatility products, they have to accept right from the start that drawdowns will happen. Remember, there's already been a single day drop of 26.8%, and a lot of traders were actually in that day. Both of my strategies were in cash, so we avoided that one, but those big drawdowns can happen. In 2011, the XIV had a 74% drawdown. In 2014, a 47% drawdown. And more recently, at the end of 2015, a 68% drawdown. And all of these were within the context of a strong bull market, so unfortunately drawdowns are just part of this process. Now, of course, it's my job and our goal to reduce them to an acceptable level, both in magnitude and duration. And lastly, if you do need to look at the annualized return number, which I don't really like to do, but I would say it definitely qualifies as a growth strategy. So I would say, objectively speaking, combining the two strategies is an improvement, but there is one consideration here that may be important for some people. Obviously, if we're gonna be trading two strategies instead of just one, it is going to increase the trade frequency. Now, neither of the strategies are very active. Like I said, they are in cash over 50% of the time, but this isn't buy and hold either. Since inception, the main volatility strategy has averaged 2.9 transactions per month, which makes it pretty easy to follow for just about anybody. The conservative vol is even less than that at just 2.5 transactions per month. So for anybody who's going to combine the two, it'll bump it up to 5.4. The average month has roughly 20 trading days, so essentially we're talking about needing to execute a trade, on average, about once every four days. This is just basic ETF trading, so it'll probably only take a couple of minutes per trade. And since the average person spends about 160 hours a month working and making their money, I think it's reasonable to spend 30 minutes or so a month making sure that it's growing safely. But we do have auto trading available for anyone who really does want it to be totally hands-off. So this isn't anything new, it's not a new strategy or anything, it's just a different way of looking at the existing ones. But I am going to go ahead and include a tab on the website and start tracking this 50-50 combined fund going forward. Of course, choosing the one strategy that best suits your needs is just as viable, but I do actually get a lot of questions about what happens when you combine them, so I wanted to let everybody know that a 50-50 split does actually get my stamp of approval. Like I said in the intro, there's a lot of people discovering investing in volatility products recently, and that's definitely a good thing. But if I could offer one piece of advice, it would be to make sure that you're trading them conservatively. And to me, that means a few things. First, make sure that any strategy you follow doesn't take an excessive number of trades. You want to keep that market exposure as low as possible. A healthy amount of cash positions is a great first line of defense against market drawdowns. Secondly, keep your allocations reasonable. I know the performance in the last several years makes it really tempting to up that exposure to the exciting world of investing in volatility products, but remember it won't always be this way. So as the old adage goes, expect the best, prepare for the worst. And lastly, consider spreading out the risk among a few different strategies. It's like when people have kids. It's impossible to choose a favorite. Of course you love them equally. 
And in this case, we don't actually have to fall in love with just one single strategy. We can actually spread the love among both of them. So thanks for watching. So go ahead and click the link right here, sign up for the VTS newsletter, and when you do, you're going to get full access to all of my trading strategies for a full month absolutely free. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and leave those in the comment section below. See you next time.